Dan Hedrington, SEH. We're going to be getting a weekly Davis refinery update uh, from Mr. Hedrington here. So uh, how about just kind of where, where are we at today here with uh, the latest on the Davis refinery? Well, I, I yeah, I, I appreciate the question. So um, things are actually going quite well. And, and as you're aware from the, the last interviews we've done and the last conversations we've had, um, the permitting on this project, is, is, you know, it takes a little bit of time. It's a highly regulated regulated project. There are, you know, over 30 permits that have to be secured for the development of, of something like this. Um, where the, the, the big item that we're going through right now is the um, air quality permit uh, that is, is facilitated by the Department of Health through the state of North Dakota. The permit itself um, was fully reviewed by the state, uh, by the air quality folks and um, a draft permit was issued and then what that does is that triggers a public comment period uh, so that people you know anybody can kind of you know comment on on you know the the project itself and the emissions or the uh the air impacts you know that the project uh, may or may not have so that that is typically a 30-day process a 30-day public comment period but the state extended it to 45 days in the, in the in this case because it, it happened over the holidays over christmas and new years so they added some additional days on it and then on uh, january 17th there a public hearing was held in dickinson so anybody from the public could just come and you know speak or offer written testimony or, or, or verbal testimony in regards to the project um, we were very pleased by the amount of people that, that showed up there, and I'd say that for the attendees, about 80% of the people that, that showed up uh, were supportive, and uh, about 20% that, that you know, had some, some concerns about the project. And um, the majority of the speakers were actually those that had concerns for the project, but either way, all of the, um, all of the testimony was taken by the state, and um, it was... It, it, at, once they collect all of the written testimony, verbal testimony, all the comments that were that were submitted over a period of time, over that 45-day period, um, then the Meridian team has an opportunity to review them and then offer responses to those comments or those questions, and then we provide that back to the state. The state then goes through and you know kind of reviews those comments, our, our responses, and then they add um, you know additional things that they might think is important to those comments, and then at that point, the state makes final decisions as to when the uh, the permit will be issued or how that how that take place takes place. So right now, the like I said, the the comment period is over. That ended, I believe, on January 26th. The public hearing was held on January 17th, and now we're going through the response portion of the of the timeline. Um, it's going very well. Uh, a lot of comments were received, uh, you know, in, in general in comparison to the, uh, to what, you know, the, the state of North Dakota typically, typically gets for, for projects. But I think it's a unique project, and there were um, a, a tremendous amount of form letters that were actually sent in. So different um, groups were asking members of their, their groups to submit these form letters where, you know, that are, are you know, where they, they can click on it and then they submit it and it gets submitted on their behalf. So a tremendous amount of the comments were form letters, and I can elaborate on that if you'd like me to and what, what kind of numbers those were, but um, we're in the process of, of responding to each of those comments and questions and, and both the form letter ones and the, um, let's call them unique ones, or the, 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 the um, yeah, uniquely developed comments. So it's going well. Well, I was going to ask you about the, if, if you knew the breakdown of that by now. Um, when I talked to Terry O'Claire a few weeks ago, shortly after the public comment period concluded, he mentioned the emails, this and that, and then all of a sudden in the news, there's 11,000 emails. And so I called him back and I was like, you know, we, we, we didn't really get into this. And he kind of made it seem like the majority of them were identical, and so they came from the same place. And kind of what I'm hearing from you is that's what you guys are seeing too. Do you, do you know the breakdown? Because from my understanding, like 99% of them were a form letter. Yeah, actually, you're, you're actually right. 97.7% um, of them were actually form letters. <laughs> so I can tell you specifically. Yeah, we know exactly what they are. Um, and we've been able to, you know, some of the original numbers that we were developing um, were after the initial run-through of the responses or of the comments. And now we've had an opportunity to go through them and, and um, 
you know, some had multiple pages that came in as, as separate emails, but they were actually part of the same email, or some of them were, you know, where they were hit multiple times where they hit enter, enter, enter to submit them online. And so what we received was a total of uh, 10,751 comments, so about 10,750. Um, out of that, um, 250 of them were, were unique. So 10,500 of them were form letters. They were exactly the same from one form, one form or another, um, from different groups that were just submitting these form letters. And um, so 250 of them were unique. And you know, and, and you know, and going through this process, it is interesting to see how this happens. So, you know, as an example, um, the group, one of the groups that we received, we received the majority of the form letters for. It was something like less than one percent of their members actually submitted the form letter, but still, it was a, a lot of a, a lot of uh, form letters that came in on uh, in regards to this project. So, even though that group didn't respond, you know, really well. The overall number, because they're so big, looks really big on our part, where we see these 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 form letters. So yeah, we see we saw ten thousand five hundred of them were form letters. Um, Two hundred fifty of them were were unique, and um, so we go through the form letters. We respond to those, and we we we're going through the unique ones and responding to them. Um, some of them are simple one page sheets that say, you know, um, you know. Well, some are very, very supportive. Um, some are just, you know, statements where we think that, you know, this is a good location or we think that isn't a good location. Some are really elaborate where they've actually, um, where they brought in um, a tremendous amount of exhibits and attachments and justification for their permission or their, their position. And those were from both sides. I mean, they were from people supportive and not, not supportive. So it, it is a, you know, it is really nice to see that, you know, that, that, you know, some people really took the time to review what we were we were submitting and review what those impacts are going to be and make comments in regards to those. Now, something you might find find interesting is out of all of those, ten thousand seven hundred fifty one or whatever you you know the comments that we got, two hundred eight were from North Dakota, and out of that two hundred eight, um, one hundred six of those were form letters. So we grabbed the, you know by the way the the, the state of North Dakota ones are are really. You know, the, even though all of them were paying attention to the state of North Dakota ones are, are, are obviously of special importance to us. So, you know, out of those 102 unique letters that we received from you know North Dakota residents, um, what's really nice about that is 48 of the 102 were f for the project, and 50 of them were kind of you know um, uh, had some concerns about the project, and then four of them were just making general comments. So. It was almost a dead split in unique letters from North Dakota about some people that had concerns versus people that were very supportive of the project. Um, now, I'm not trying to disregard the form letters, but those form letters um, that that we received were um, that were from North Dakota uh, were all answered, you know, as the form letters were answered. They're all exactly the same, so we go through and answer those exactly the same. So I don't know some some additional stuff, Jason. That might be interesting to you, just because I do know this because we've been in depth, uh, the, you know, digging in this thing up to our elbows. Um, Fifteen hundred of them were from California. Uh, Seven hundred and you know thirty or something like that were from New York. Uh, it, it's interesting. Uh, you know, there were a bunch of them were um, from outside of uh, uh, this, uh, the United States as well. I mean, we think we had responses from, and these are generally form letters from, I think, twenty five different countries. Um, so it was it was an interesting kind of a mix of of what we got comments from. What's next for Meridian and the Department of Health, that sort of thing? I mean, because if, if I'm looking at the bigger picture here, trying to be sterile, I guess. Um, from talking with the health department, there wasn't really a lot of comments on the air quality and. So that would tell me that I, I would assume most of these state comments are going to be satisfied and that sort of thing. I guess maybe not. I don't know what's what's next because, like I said, I, I think the majority of them actually didn't really have anything to do with air quality. It had to do with location. Yeah, I, I think that's a fair assessment. Um, now, some of them did. I mean, some of them were were, were really asking some some in depth questions. Um, and and you're right, the majority the majority weren't you know at asking in depth questions. But um, you know, we're responding to them all with the exact same level of uh, priority. Every you know, all of these are are going to be responded to to the best of our ability. Um, 
the state, so what happens, you said kind of what's next. So we're going through our responses, and the state is kind of looking at their responses at the exact same time. And um, we will be submitting ours, and when we submit our final, you know, set of responses to them, they'll have to take a look at ours as well. And um, they're looking for, you know, just, you know, consistency and looking for, you know, to make sure that nothing was missed or, you know, just to kind of to, to go through over things in general. And then ultimately, once they, they kind of reconcile that whole situation where they have their comments and our comments and, you know, is everything kind of matching and, and are all of them are uh, answered appropriately. Now, remember, some of these, I, I, I am saying answered appropriately specifically because some of these are, you know, were very rude comments that were just name-calling opportunities and things like that. So, you know, they will be responded to appropriately, and then um, the state will make a decision as to, you know, when and how and, you know, what conditions or if any or whatever they put on the actual permit itself. So it's a, ultimately the state, a state decision, a state timeline. I can't tell you exactly when that is, but what I am 100% comfortable in is that, um, they are going through these thoroughly. Uh, we are as well, and we're going to be providing them with our, our responses soon. Um, I'd say within the next you know couple of weeks, we'll have them wrapped up, and um, we'll have them in their hands. And um, and like I said, they're working at the same time, so I, I would expect that it won't be that long afterwards that you know everything's kind of brought together and it'll be resolved. Have they? Um given you any loose timelines on on things i i know that um they can't give you specific dates and everything but th there's got to be some sort of i would imagine there's got to be some loose timelines on this because you know you guys have investors and people working around the clock on this types of thing i mean this is you know every, every day that goes by it costs people money and i get that the health department and the state wants to be as thorough as they can but at the same time, there's got to be some timelines in here. I, I, have we gotten to that point yet, or are we still kind of in limbo? So, you know, I, 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 in limbo is, is not really what I would say. Here's, here's, here, so let me give you the general perspective. Um, the, the state understands that, that we that are involved in the project have – I apologize for that. Uh, we at, that are involved in the project have um, – a desire to to secure the permit as soon as possible so that we can avoid potential weather delays that are typical in North Dakota. So a quick version is, is, is and you're well aware of this, is that winter can come on hard and fast. And so next fall, um, things can get really cold and really snowy very quickly. So the intent of the, of the project or the hope of the project is to try to get in the ground as soon as possible. Um, get all of our erosion control in place and our stormwater and everything like that in place and to, you know, then at that point get footings and foundations and structures up so that um, the, the, the different team members that are building the project can work indoors during the winter and that all of that, you know, that work that needs to be done outside can be done as much as possible prior to the onset of winter. Now, with that in mind, the state understands that as well. Uh, they have prioritized this project, but it, but in reality, we understand that it's it's a big issue. It's a it's a it's a, a a lot of information that needs to be reviewed, and they want to review it thoroughly and make sure they're 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 paying attention to all the details that they possibly can. So um, it's it's really not in limbo, but it's more of a you know I think it's a commitment that everybody's made to or everybody is in, you know agreed to that you know. We're all doing the best that we can to get the information to the state, and they're doing the best they can to review things, um, and really, you know, just trying to get it done as soon as possible. Um, so it's not like, oh, you know, I think that this could take, you know, six months or ten months or anything like that. But um, I can't tell you that, you know, we think that, you know, we'll we'll we would like to see issuance by a given date. But I will say that all the parties that are involved um, are. You know, this is not something you, you desire to drag on and, and let last for a long period of time. So everybody's doing the best they can to um, to do their portion of the of the of the work as quickly as can be done. So you know, we understand that, and and they're doing the best they can, and we're doing the best we can. Dan Henryton, S E H, Davis Refinery. Um, any final thoughts you might have here? No, I, I, I guess really what it boils down to is that. Uh, this is an exciting time for us. We're, 
were, you know, securing the, the permits that are necessary for the project, and everyone who, who was, you know, in the, in the, you know, initial development of the project understood that it was going to take some time, and, uh, but it's all coming together. You know, initially, people were saying things like, you know, this, the, they'll never meet the emissions threshold. Well, that's not true. Um, you know, well, they'll never, you know, secure this permit. Well, that's not true. I mean, these, 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 these projects, even though they're complicated and they, they get scrutinized pretty heavily, um, once people understand that the amount of effort and the amount of um, advanced technology that's being applied to, to this project, this is going to be a, a big thing for the, for the country as a whole to see, you know, how clean refineries actually can be um, once they're, they're allowed to be constructed and once people take the initiative to, um, to use, use that advanced technology and, um, and actually put these things in place. So we're excited.